is another word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five. Three zero zero three eight five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle teacher and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. To the Word of God through Jesus Christ with Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. God bless you and enjoy the message. Previously on the Word of God through Jesus Christ in Scripture, Jacob had this dream about these angels going up to heaven, down to the earth. And back up to heaven. This is what he saw. 
that's what we left off at, that prophets and prophetesses, women that are in the prophetic office, they speak what God says. They don't speak on their own. And because people don't know, they don't study, a lot of people don't study the word of God, they don't know what God said and didn't. Thank God that we're reading it now. So when God tell a prophet, the Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says. On my Facebook, one of my Facebook accounts, every day the Lord give me like 10 to 12 words, posts. He just give me words just to put out there. God said, blah, 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 blah. God said, blah, because I spent it again. Every morning when the Lord wake me up, the first 12 hours of my day, I am on an absolute fast. No liquids, no food, straight up absolute fast. In prayer, standing, fighting, praying, fasting. I've actually come down. I, before the fast, I was like 228. Now I'm down to 216. I didn't come on this fast with the intention of losing the weight. But that's what happened. That's what happened. Thank you, Jesus. That's what happened. And God said, But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And now back to our scheduled program. The important thing to notice is the work of angels. Angels. Because angels play a big part in our life and in this world. There's two types of angels. There's holy elect angels, the sons of God, and then there's fallen angels who are called demons. The Hebrew name for all demons is Mazakin. And what it means is one who does harm. While we're on the subject of angels, let's first notice something. Because if you remember in Genesis 32, verse 24 says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. But when, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me. I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask, ask after my name? And he blessed him. He never told him his name. He said, Why are you asking me my name? But he had the authority to change Jacob's name. This was not an ordinary angel. In the world of theology, there's two words that we use. And some people that are in the theology class of this ministry that have reached that level, there's two words that we are familiar with. One is called a theophany. The other is called a Christophany. And they're really the same thing. A theophany is a pre-Bethlehem appearance of Jesus Christ. 
And a Christophany is a pre-Bethlehem appearance of the Savior, Jesus Christ. One theophany and Christophany that's very important to recognize is Genesis chapter 14, verse 17 through 24. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedolomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavech, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. No one told Melchizedek to do that. That's the first time tithe is mentioned, which it only means 10. That's all it means. The word in the Hebrew is miasro, and it means 10th or 10th part or the 10th. If you have a $10 and you got 10 ones and you count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you give that 10th one, that's the tenth or the tithe of that $10, that particular one. If you have 20 cans of corn and you say, I'm going to tithe this, and you give two, or yeah, if it's 20 cans, and you give two, that's a tenth. Now, it's not a law to give a tenth. No, a lot of ministers tell you that because they want your money. But it's not a law. And when God spoke to Israel about it, it's because in Nehemiah chapter 9 and chapter 10, Israel made a covenant with God that if you do this and this and this for us and get us out of captivity and bring us back in our city, we will give a tithe and a tithe of a tithe. We'll give a tenth of the tenth and yada, yada, yada. And then they didn't do it and God did deliver them. But in the book of Malachi, he told the prophet Malachi, go tell Israel, not the Gentiles, so if you're from Chicago, don't say, well, the pastor said I got to pay tithe. No, don't, don't fall for that. The pa that if, if a pastor told you that, then he does not know what he's talking about. He need to sign up for a Bible Institute or something. Not even a theology class, but a Bible Institute. He might need to start from the beginning. Because th that's a fundamental teaching. Anyone that's telling you, pay your tithes and you'll be blessed, then what about the ones that don't have a job? So because they can't, quote, pay a tithe, end quote, they're not blessed? See, people overlook the most obvious error in sin. Obvious error and sin. People overlook that. A lot of people are saying, now let's talk about the sisters. I follow God. I do what God say. Well, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 5, it says if you worship God or pray, your know, prayer is worship and prophesying, which is speaking for God, you ought to cover your head, the very top of your cranium. Because it shows you are a submissive vessel and you are agreeing with God, saying that you are under the authority of man. I'm not married. No, not your husband. Man. It doesn't mean man is your covering. Your covering is God. But a woman is a submissive vessel. God did not make you to fight and argue and dominate and wrestle and take off the earrings and the shoes and want to throw hands with your husband. No, no, man, no. Stuff like that gets you left. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Melchizedek, we know that, that was, he was a Christophany. He was actually a pre-Bethlehem appearance of Christ. And one of the reasons we know this is because if you look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, I believe, You know what? I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible, plain English, so don't be over a lot of people has. Hebrews chapter 7, and let's notice uh, verse 1. This Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem and also a priest of the Most High God. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against many kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had won in the battle and gave it to Melchizedek. Now that would be the animals that he won, you know, the, the, the booty, the food. Read the scripture in Genesis 14. And see, see about that. See, go back, go back to, to the beginning and read the whole chapter. And you'll notice that. It wasn't money only. Because money was not a commodity then. And then it says in verse 2 again, Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had won in the battle and gave it to Melchizedek. Melchizedek's name means justice. So he is the king of justice, and he is also the king of peace because of the name of his city, Salem, which means peace. Now, he was listed in Scripture. Now, it says, I, I got to read this out of the King James because for some, that's too plain. And it's cutting it. It's cutting it bad. So for those of us that are teachers, let's chapter 7, verse 1 of Hebrews. For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. It says, verse 2, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First, being by interpretation, Melchizedek is talking about king of righteousness. Now, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Now, I feel funny reading this. I'm going to tell you why, because if there's an evangelist watching who's trying to play pastor, he's going to get the answer to a question, because he said in the sermon that nowhere in the Bible did it say Jesus is God. And there were so many people saying, amen, I was... I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But God's going to hold that man accountable. And he's going to end up shutting that ministry down. Unless somebody starts teaching the truth. There is one powerful prophet there who needs to stop saying amen so much and let God shape him. Because he, I, I, you know, apostles, we have to watch things that go on in our city or surrounding cities sometime because God sent me to this ministry <clears throat> and I see why he did it. But this evangelist is on a power trip and didn't let God use the ministry to help because if he had it by now he would have known the truth because he also said we don't serve a triune God. He's off. He's off. He's off. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But unto the Son he saith, this is God talking to Jesus, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now this is God talking to Jesus. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. 
And thou, Lord, now God is calling Jesus Lord with a capital L, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. So now we have Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And right here, God said to Jesus, you created the heavens and the earth. Now, that's not difficult. That can be explained, but this is not that lesson. What we're talking about right now is a Christophany and a Theophany. But God called Jesus God. And, and the reason why I was led by God to go there is because Hebrews 1 and 8, where it says, where God said, to Jesus, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness or rightness or straightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus was the king of righteousness. And so was Melchizedek. His name by interpretation, he was the king of righteousness. Also, he was the king of Salem which in the Greek is Salem, which in the Hebrew is Shalem. And Shalem means peace, just like the Greek Salem does, Salem. It means peace. So Melchizedek was the king of righteousness, the king of peace, which Shalem is an early name for Jerusalem, and it means peaceful. And so where we get the name Jehovah Shalom, or actually the tetragram, the tetragrammaton, Y-H-V-H, which you can't pronounce it. So let's just say Yahweh Shalom, or Yehovah Shalom, Shalom, meant Yehovah is peace. So this proves that Melchizedek was Christ. Some people might say, wait a minute, that don't, that don't prove it. Okay, let's go further. Hebrews chapter 7. Let's notice verse 3. I'm going back in the Living Bible because I want to read it to you plain so that you would get it. Try not to let this Bible fall apart. But I'll leave that there. I could grab another living Bible off the shelf here. Hebrews chapter 7, verse. Let's, let me, let, let's read verse 2 again. Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had won in the battle and gave it to Melchizedek. Melchizedek name means justice, so he is the king of justice, and he is also the king of peace because of the name of his city, Salem, which means peace. Melchizedek had no father or mother, and there was no record of any of his ancestors. He was never born, and he never died, but his life is like that of the Son of God, a priest forever. So, him not having no father, him not having no mother. Some of you might say, well, Jesus had a father. Yes, he did, according to the flesh. Because everything that has a mother in the earth realm has to have a father. So that flesh, that body, was named Jesus. And the Holy Ghost, who is God, he was in that body, and he kept it right. I'll throw another tidbit out there. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery or the mysterion of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. This is the King James Version, straight from the Greek. God, Theos, was manifest in the flesh. Then it says, justified in the spirit, capital S. So that means the Holy Ghost kept that flesh right and righteous and sinless and pure 
and holy. Now this very same pastor said, or no, he's not a pastor. This very same evangelist said, well, Jesus was not a man. Now he said some stuff to psych the people out and because they didn't understand this amateurish psychology he was talking, they still would say amen, 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 amen. And he was so off because he said, because Jesus was not Joseph's son, Mary, there was no blood in Mary, but the blood came. He was talking gibberish. And I can't believe that they didn't stand up and tell him, you're fired. <laughs> oh, God. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, capital S, the Holy Ghost seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now it says here, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, no matter meaning, no matter what you say. There's not a small thing. There's not a thing that a psychology major or a psychiatry major can understand. This, no, you're not going to understand this because it's not logical. Great is the mystery, something that's been held back from people understanding, of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. So the spirit kept that body right. Mm-hmm. And as we read about Melchizedek being without father, without mother, without descent, and having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. He never died. He wasn't born. He had no beginning. He had no end. That was a Christophany. That was Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is God. Oh, we're going to see some things in a minute. In the Old Testament, there was many theophanies. The angel of the Lord that you read about in the Old Testament was Jesus Christ himself. In Genesis 48, 16, where Jacob, while dying, is blessing his grandchildren, his two grandchildren, he prays something. Genesis 48, verse 16. Here's what he said. The angel, capital A, which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now, this is deep, and the reason it's deep is because a regular angel cannot redeem no man. There's only one redeemer, and that's Jesus Christ. Another theophany and Christophany is Judges 13 and 18. There was a couple who was barren, and they just had learned from the angel of the Lord about Samson's future birth. To show his gratitude, Manoah, Samson's father, asked the name of the angel so that he could name the baby after him. But the angel of the Lord answered this way. This is what he said in the book of Judges, chapter 13, verse 8. Here's what he says. Verse 18, excuse me. Here's what he said. And the angel of the Lord, let, let me go back to verse 17. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? He would say, When the baby is born, I can name the baby after you. What's your name? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest, askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Then it says in verse 20, and I got to read this. I mean, 19, I got to read this for a reason. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah 
and his wife looked on. Now, what the angel says in verse 18, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? The word secret right here is from the word pili or pali and means remarkable, secret, wonderful. He said, why are you asking my name when it's wonderful or when it's secret or when it's remarkable? And this word Pali, Pali, comes from the Hebrew word Pele, which Pele means a miracle, a marvelous thing, wonderful, wonder. This noun often expresses the wonder or the extraordinary aspects meaning forms, appearances, and conditions of God's dealings with his people. Also, it's the messianic name of wonderful in Isaiah 9 and 6, Pele. So Pele is the root word, and the word Pali or Pili, because that's two different words that mean the same thing, they both mean remarkable, secret, and wonderful in Judges 13 and 18. But then there's another word called Pali. Well, actually, Pali is from the Hebrew word Pala, which also means by implication to be or to causatively make great, difficult, wonderful. So in Judges 13 and 19, where it says, So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did Paula wondrously. See, Paula and Pali come from the Hebrew word Pele, which all three of them mean wonderful. So this angel said, why are you asking my name, seeing that my name is remarkable? It's too incomprehensible for you. And it's the same thing. Now that shows right there that that's referring to Jesus. His name was secret. He didn't let no one know who he was. He was called the angel, the, not an angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord. And if you study angelology, you'll find that the angel of the Lord came with authority. He came with authority. But he was a Christophany. Christophany. There's some Old Testament theophanies and Christophanies, like Jesus appeared unto Hagar, Abraham's Egyptian wife, Genesis 16, verses 7 through 14. Jesus appeared unto Abraham in Genesis 18 and 1 when he came with the two angels. Remember? It was God because Jesus is God. We're going to see something that's going to blow you away in a minute. And when Abraham got ready to sacrifice Isaac, the angel of the Lord, who was Jesus, he said, stop. Don't do it. Jesus also appeared unto Jacob when Jacob had that dream and the Lord stood at the top of the ladder and said, I am the Lord. That was Jesus Christ. Now this is Old Testament. That was Jesus Christ. That was a Christophany and a Theophany. Both of those words mean the same thing. A pre-Bethlehem appearance of Christ. And when Jacob was wrestling with him, he was wrestling with Jesus Christ. And Jesus also appeared unto Moses. He talked to him from the burning bush. And also, in Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21, Scripture says,
Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Now, here's proof that this wasn't no ordinary angel. Here's what God said. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. This is God the Father talking about Jesus, who is God, the Son. We serve a three-in-one God, a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. One God. Some of you don't understand that. That's why in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 1, God said, let us make man in our image. Now this evangelist said image and likeness meant symbol. That's a lie. Image and likeness means a duplicate of me. That's what God said. Let us make man like us, a duplicate of us. Let him have dominion and authority. And in the image of God created he him. Now this wasn't physical, meaning when God said image, it wasn't a physical image. He did make man and 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 he put it blue, he put him in he formed man of the dust of the earth, blew the breath of life, his spirit, into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. He didn't, he, he wasn't a spirit. He had a spirit, which is the breath of God. But he became a living soul. Now you might say, well, what does all this have to do with the, the lesson? Because in order for you to start casting out demons, and you got to know this. You got to know whose power you're tapping into to accomplish that. Stay with me for a minute. Just walk with me because we're getting ready to go somewhere deep and then we're going to be through. Walk with me. God blew the breath of life into Adam's nostril. He became a living soul. The Bible says, in the image of God created he him, meaning Adam's spiritual image was like God. That's why when the devil told Eve, you shall not surely die, he was talking about, you're not going to die physically, not now, but you're not going to die physically. And he was right. But where he was wrong at was Eve did die, but she died spiritually. How? Because her, well, Adam, it says in the image of God created he him, the male and female created he them. I could take a piece of paper and do this. Visual aid. So that way you'd understand. In the image of God, he created him, Adam, Ish, or Ishaw. He created Adam. And then, in the, it says, in the image of God created he him, the male and female created he them. So they were both in the image of God, spiritually. And this is where we are equal at, male and female. Because what God would do for me, he will do for my wife. Spiritually. Now, there's some physical responsibilities and roles that we have that God is not going to change. He's not going to go against his order. I cannot have a baby out of my body and what, where? And I won't. And God is not going to let that happen. So some of y'all say, well, they got doctors doing now. They're going straight to hell because they're saying God is wrong how he made man. This is how it should be. Oh, but again, this is why this country is going through so much. And if they think that the pandemic is over, that that demon named COVID-19 has stopped, uh, has, has given up the countries, no, no. He done went and got seven other demons worse than himself. And y'all heard that there was another strand of this virus. Because he didn't went and got seven other demons worse than himself and came back and he's coming back with stronger force. And that vaccine, 
it's not FDA approved. It's EUA, which means emergency use authorized. Put the A in front. Authorized emergency use. They needed to have something right now to, to protect people. So they, all these people, if you remember, were fighting to come up with a virus. I mean, a vaccine, excuse me. So then they had a few of them out, and look at all the things going wrong. Apostle, did you take it? No. If y'all remember, as the Lord led me to tell you, I didn't even wear a mask during this, and I'm still not going to. Why? Because if I put on a mask, I'm saying that my God is weak, and he's not. He's not. And I'm not going to let the devil get too close to me so that that demon can try to take me out or even touch me. No. So you got to watch where you go. People don't have a settled spirit. They got to run. They got to go here and go there. Uh-uh. Nah. I got too much to do for the Lord. I know how to stay put. Everything I need in the house, I got except my wife. Everything else, I have. I'm cool. And I love working for the Lord. And right now he's got me really concentrating on the corporate side of ministry. So, this angel, God said, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. God said, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. This angel of the Lord was a theophany and a Christophany. Now, again, one last scripture on that point is, is Exodus 33, verse 18, where Moses said, let me go back to verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Verse 18, Moses said, it says, And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. He asked God, let me see your glory. Let me see your glory. Those of us that are fasting, it's important to ask God that. Let me see your glory. Show me your glory. If it's you saying this and that, show me your glory. And here's what God said to him. I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Some might not understand that. Think about the times that God has brought you out and you saw God go by. You know today things was chaotic and rough, but later on something changed. You saw God pass by. You didn't see him coming, but you saw 
It's like when you have peripheral vision and you see something moving, you do like this. Prophets and prophetesses, you know what I'm talking about. Brother, apostle, John, though. And those that are filled with the gift of discernment. Those that are filled with the Holy Ghost with the gift of discernment. Evangelists, you understand. When you see something out the corner of your eye. When you see God pass by, you be like, wow, look what God just did. This is bringing us to the next part of this, and then we'll be through. When he asked God to show him his glory. Now, this is funny because now we're going to take a turn. Stay with me. In John 17, when Jesus prayed, and this is the actual our Father's prayer. Because this is how Jesus, we, this is a record of his intercessory prayer where he interceded for himself, he interceded for the apostles, and then he interceded for all of us. Here's what he said in John 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. He's talking about let's share this glory. As thou has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal, that he, the son, should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now remember, inside that body was God. But that body was named Jesus. For that body was going to save man from their sins. That body was. He said in verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now watch this. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now to some of you, it's not going to make no sense. And then there's others of you that are caught in some denominational bondage, different ones, that will say, oh, Jesus was talking about him and God, you know, uh, together in heaven. Get ready to throw something at you right quick. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. And this is for that evangelist that said to me, how can Jesus be God when there's only one God? See, again, man, you need to let this go. Stop trying to think and figure God out. Don't you got some flaws with your flesh? Hasn't the devil sent a messenger, Satan, to buffet you? And you got a thorn in your flesh. When Paul said thorn in his flesh, he meant there was a physical ailment he had. Don't you got a physical ailment? Concentrate on God helping you with that. Stop trying to rationalize God with this because you'll never do it. You'll lose your mind, man. You won't do it. There's geniuses, Howard Hughes, other geniuses that have lost their mind because they were too smart. Apart from God, they, they depended on their own wisdom. Don't do that. Don't do that. Isaiah chapter 42, I'm going to start at verse 1. Behold, this is God talking. And it's talking about the office of Jesus Christ. Now, isn't it somehow in Isaiah 42 
the office of Jesus Christ will be discussed? Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. Let me read that for you again, verse 5. Thus saith God the Lord, who? He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spit it to them that walk therein. Now verse 6, God said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Now look at verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, if God said, I won't give my glory to another, then why would Jesus say, glorify thou me with the glory that I had with thee before the foundations of the earth? Why would he say that? God said, I won't give my glory to another. And again, Jesus said, Glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I have with thee before the world was. So now, according to some denominations, there were two before the world was God and Jesus. So they put two gods up. Now the Holy Ghost, most people in a lot of denation, denominations call the Holy Ghost an it anyway. They, I got it. And, and you know Shirley sees me that's on the Holy Ghost I have. The world didn't give it to me. And a lot of people are following that devilish doctrine. Not only that, but this evangelist is not even Holy Ghost filled, and I know he's not. So why they hired him to stand in the pulpit and lead them without the Holy Ghost filling him, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I remember years ago, the Lord sent me to New Britain, Connecticut to go visit a friend of mine. And he asked God, he asked me to let God use me to speak. He gave me a speaking engagement. This was back in 95. And uh, the Lord used me to minister. And to make a long story short, the Lord led me to do a, a, two, a prayer line, two of them, one for adults, one for children. And the Lord led me to say to him, you, you pray over the children. And the Lord used me to pray over the adults. Well, when they came, God was using me as a prophet. And he used me to pray over them. And, and he was using me to speak in tongues and to speak mysteries and all of that. I had the gift of interpreting tongues, but they didn't. You know, God gave me that gift. He gave me that. The closer you walk with God, the more he will manifest, he'll magnify your gifts and sharpen them and the whole nine. So the Lord led me to, to, to speak, and, and I didn't know at the moment what God was saying. I mean, again, even though he gave me the gift of interpreting, he's not going to 
allow me to know what's being said unless he chooses to do that. So there were some things I understood, some things I didn't. So when we left, actually that's when I first saw the oops. Because when they took up an offering, they took up two offerings, one for that ministry and one for the speaker. And I saw, God said, watch this. And I looked and I saw the lady that was counting the denarii, the money. I saw her dump one basket into the other. And she said, oops. I said, ain't that a blip? And the pastor, he is not a pastor. But he said, oh, I'll, uh, well, we'll just give what's fair. <laughs> yeah, right. He was, he, was, he was intimidated, he was jealous, he was envious. And the way God used me, he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. How do I know? Because when I was riding with him back to his house, he said, uh, brother, when you was praying, and you was praying in tongues, how did you do that? I always wanted to do that. And I looked at him. And I said, wait a minute. You're leading the ministry and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost? But a lot of ministries are like that. A lot of, and then you got the ones that chant. Oh, ba 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 ba. That's chanting. That's chanting. That's not talking in tongues. That's not. That's not the spirit of God talking through you, because He doesn't talk ignorant like that. That's chanting. And a lot of you that are under ministries where that's going on. You're, you're having curses being spoken over you. And if you're chanting too, all of y'all is cursing the whole ministry. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. I just thank you for all that I have in you and all that you are in my life for all that you've done for thy servant Lord you're just so wonderful you're just so wonderful I can't think of how else my life would be without you as long as I have Jesus I have a satisfied mind this is my prayer sometimes I
Satisfied. 